watching us now But when it looks as if we can't win You wrap us in your arms and step in And everything we need you supply You
Greetings and a blessed good morning. Welcome this morning to our online church. Those of you who are viewing, we greet you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank God that this is the day the Lord has made and we can rejoice and be glad in it. Always a joy, always a pleasure and a delight to be in your company. And so we welcome you this morning. St. Madeline Open Bible Church here in Trinidad. And so we say good morning, good evening, good night, good day. Whichever part of the world you are, we welcome you. And we encourage you to share the link with someone. Let them know that SMOBC is online. And God have a word for somebody today from the word of God. And so we welcome you, bless you, special good morning to the members of the St. Madeline Open Bible Church this morning. We greet you in Jesus' powerful name. And all our friends and our followers, we welcome you. And I want to remind you, before I get into the word, to, to today's communion, every first Sunday in our church, we have communion as instructed by the Lord Jesus. And so I'm just putting you on the alert so that you can get your cricks or your bread and uh, your grape juice, your cranberry, anything that you can have to drink, symbolic of the blood of Christ, wine and the bread. I want to encourage you to get it together because we will be having communion after the word this morning. So I want to ask as many of you born again, living the overcoming life, that let's participate and let's partake of communion right after the word. So I want to alert you so you can put things in place and you can join us. And so this morning, I want to draw your attention to 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 1. We thank God we finished our family month and this month is ministry month where we have an emphasis on encouraging people to discover their purpose, encouraging people to get involved in the work of God, encouraging people to discover their spiritual gifts and how they can be available and how they can be used of Almighty God. It's ministry month and we want to encourage you to join us this month in our services for special prayer for the work of God and for workers to really arise and do the work of God. And so this morning, I want to draw your attention to 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 1. Just one verse to kind of use it as a platform to get off this morning with the message. 1 Kings 17 and verse 1, it reads, And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. I want to encourage you that let's have a word of prayer this morning. Father, we thank you for today. It's a great day. It's a good day. It's a new day, Father. We thank you for your word. We thank you for those on the online church streaming, wherever they're on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, the website, wherever they're viewing today, Father, we release the blessing of God upon individuals who are viewing today from all over. We release your strength. We release your power. And we are trusting you to speak to us today, O oh God. Let your word find root in our souls. Let it be mixed with faith and let our lives be changed forevermore. Today, Lord, we say, speak for your servants hear it. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. First Kings 17 and verse 1. This morning, I want to entitle this morning's message as we launch our ministry month, Making a Difference. Making a Difference. Most people want something more out of their life. They want their life to count. They want their life to make a difference. They want their life to be a blessing to others. They want to be used of God mightily. They want something more than an ordinary life. And so most people, many people in my experience, including myself, just don't want to let's live life, get up, go to work, do the routine mundane things, go back and sleep and then get up. You know, life can be boring like that. And so there's a cry in the heart of many for something more, something ordinary. Many are crying out. You might be watching me this morning and you're saying that I want my life to make a difference. I want my life to count. When I come to the end of my life, when I come to the end of my time here on the earth, I want to know that I've made a difference. I've been a blessing to people and I've been used of God to fulfill a purpose. And so I want you to know this morning that you were created with a purpose and God have a plan for your life and there's a gifting, there's an ability of God inside of you. So if you're wondering and you're, you're desiring of making a difference and you want your life to count, I want you to know you are wanted by God. You are wanted for service by Almighty God because you were created with a purpose, for a purpose, and you were created on purpose by Almighty God. I want to declare that you're not a problem. You are a possibility. You are not a copy. You are an original made in God's image. You are not ordinary. You are extraordinary. And so God is in the business of using the ordinary common people to do extraordinary things for him. And in the Bible and in life, we have seen examples of common ordinary people that God called and God anointed and empowered. People like Moses and David and Peter and the Apostle Paul. And even, even people in our time, in this 21st century, have been all over the world. People are making themselves available and they're coming forward. 
on this time of COVID-19, this time of pandemic, this time of problems, of uncertainty, of doom and gloom as it were. In these end time, it is not a time to be backing away from God. It is not a time to be pulling out of the race, pulling out of the work of God. This is a time to be pressing forward and going forward in the work of God, going forward in the work of the ministry. In these last and closing days, there is a call by the Spirit of God to get involved in the work of God. And if you're involved in the work of God, this month is for you. We encourage you to do our work for God. But this is not a time to be backing back, turning back, looking back and taking your hands off of the plow, out of the working tools of the kingdom of God, giving up on your anointing, giving up on your ministry. This is a call to work for God. And so you are not ordinary this morning. You are extraordinary. God have a plan for you. God have a work for you. If you're involved in the work of God, I want to encourage you in these last and closing days. Even in the midst of the trials of life and problems of our world, God is in the business of doing things with people, ordinary people. He can do extraordinary things. And there have been people that God is raising up in our world who is empowering for his service and his work. And so today, over the next few weeks, I want you to join us if you can as I will glean on certain Characters of the Bible who were common ordinary men and women that God raised up and used and God want to raise you up, God want to use you and God wants you to get involved in the work of God. God wants you as we are titled today's message, he wants you and he created you to make a difference. And so this morning I want to draw your attention as we would have read in 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 1. I want to draw a reference and glean some lessons about making a difference from someone I believe who was common and ordinary, who appeared out of nowhere as it were, and God used him to change his world and to make an impact on the world that he lived in at that time. And so Elijah is the person I want to introduce you to. You normally hear about Elijah and Elijah in the Old Testament, the prophets of God. And so Elijah, he first appears in scriptures in 1 Kings chapter 17, and we call him, as the Bible says, that he's Elijah the Tishbite from Gilead. And there's some uncertainty as to where Tishbite and Gilead were, who were his parents, his siblings, and, and it might infer that his parents were remarkable godly people because the name Elijah means my God is Jehovah or Jehovah is my God. And so the Bible doesn't give us much about his history, about his background, who his parents were, his siblings, even where he lived, there's there's still research being done as to where Gilad was, which tribe he belonged to. And so he was a man with no history apparently, but God used him to make history. And so your background, you might be ordinary, you might be common, you might be an unknown as it were. That's like Elijah was, but God was able to touch him and use him. God is able to put his hand upon you, touch you and use you and call you into his service to make a difference. And so he made an impact on his world and his world at the time was the ninth century BC. And when you review the time that Elijah lived in, there is not much of a difference between his time and our time. The time that he lived in was a dark and dangerous time. It was a time of spiritual decline and apostasy. And so there were many wicked kings and leaders in his time, beginning with the reign of Jeroboam in 1 Kings chapter 12. And after Jeroboam, there were seven successive wicked kings who reigned over Israel, beginning with Jeroboam in the northern kingdom, the first ruler, and he instituted idol worship, and he led the nation into spiritual decay and sexual perversion, as it were, and building upon his wickedness, after Jeroboam, there were successive kings and leaders who came, and they continued to plunge the people of God into spiritual decline, decay, and apostasy, and so it was against this dark background, this doomy, gloomy time of idolatry, and backsliding, and immorality, and how hardness of heart towards God, that God raised up Elijah, an ordinary common man, to make a difference. I want to declare for your life that like Elijah, what God did in and through Elijah, he can do in and through you, and he wants your life to make a difference because you were created with a purpose to make a difference. And so when Elijah came on the scene, 9th century BC, the reigning king in Israel was King Ahab. King Ahab. And the scripture informs us that Ahab, in 1 Kings 16 and verse 33, he did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel and to anger him among all the kings of Israel that were before him. He did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. He had turned his people from the worship of God to the worship of Baal, a heathen God. And because of the wickedness of Israel and turning away from God to the God of Baal, God had caused the heavens to be closed for three and a half years. And God would have spoken through Moses in the book of Deuteronomy that if 
whatever his people have turned away from the true God to worship idols, to worship other gods, that he would have judged the land and he would have caused drought to come and he would have shut up the heavens. And so in the time of Elijah, there was a drought as it were and God had shut up the heavens for three and a half years. And Elijah, he comes on the scene and his introduction, his words are, there would be no dew drop on any flower for years, no rain clouds to cross the skies, no rains to drench the land, all the skies will be closed up. Elijah, when he comes on the scene, he announced, there will be no rain for three and a half years. This ordinary common man, Elijah, who lived in a dark, dangerous time, like our times, where men's hearts are hard towards God, even the people of God, are turning away from God. And some people don't want God. They, they don't want church. They don't want to become a disciple of Christ. He lived in a time like this, but in the midst of that, God raised up Elijah to make a difference. And I'm saying to you today, what God did for Elijah, he can do for you. And so I made an, a few observations about, it, about him, who God raised up, an ordinary common man with no history, to change history, that God want to do it for you. I observed three principles about people like Elijah, that, who made a difference. In Elijah, I firstly found out that he was a man of purpose. He was a man of purpose. Elijah, God had given him a work to do. And he had a work to do for God. His purpose came from the Lord. He understood that it was God who called him to be a prophet to the nation of Israel. Someone said, the man without a purpose is like a ship without a rudder. Someone said, without a purpose, life is motion without meaning, activity with dire without direction, and events without reason. He was a man of purpose. I'm saying to you today that you have to live with purpose. You were created with a purpose. People who make a difference, they have a strong sense of purpose, mission, and destiny. Without a clear purpose, you have no foundation on which to base your directions. You have no foundation on which to base your decisions. Allocate your time and use your resources. You are no accident. God has you here on earth for a purpose and with a purpose for his purpose in particular. The Apostle John in the book of Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11 says, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they they exist and were created. The, the scripture is telling us that we exist. You exist because God wanted you to exist. You are created because God created you. God the Almighty is the creator and the maker of all things and the giver of life. Therefore, life is about fulfilling God's purpose. And so the, the writer of the book of Revelation, the apostle John says, for you created all things, talking about God, and by your will, that word means purpose or, or determination, they exist and they were created. And so to discover your purpose in life, you have to turn to God. You have to turn to his word. You might be saying, Pastor, I don't know what is my purpose. I believe I have a purpose. I want my life to make a difference. You can discover your purpose by going to God and by reading his word and God by his spirit will reveal purpose and destiny. So Elijah, he grasped he connected with God, and as a result, he connected with the purpose of God. You see, friends, you cannot know the purpose of God unless you connect with God. Many want to know the purpose of God for their life. Many want to know the will of God. That is why there's a great move towards astrology and the psychic hotlines because people are interested in the future and they want to know what is to come. But God Almighty is the creator. He's the all-knowing God and he knows the end from the beginning and he has a plan for your life. And Elijah, he connected with God to connect to the purpose of God. If you want to know the purpose of God, you cannot do it without God. You need to connect with Almighty God. And so Elijah connected with God and he discovered his purpose his life, everything that he, he is, everything that he has and will ever be is to bring glory to God. It is to glorify God by demonstrating that the God of Israel was the true God. And so in 1 Kings 18 and 37, it says in, his, in a prayer, he says, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. His, his purpose was hinged, amen, on glorifying God and that, that God's people may know that the Lord is God and that the living God is among them and that they will turn their hearts back to God again. What is not wonderful that our purpose on the earth is to glorify God and in everything we do in whatever way it must be to point people to God. It must be to bring people to Almighty God. He wanted to vindicate the name of God and at the same time rescue and deliver his brothers the people of Israel who were in a backslidden apostate condition. Elijah even though he was an ordinary man he understood he existed for a purpose. And our main purpose in whatever we do is to glorify God. And in glorifying Him, we must point people to God. His history, His story, 
and his history is a mystery because there's not much said. He appears in 1 Kings 17. We don't know much about his background, his family, his siblings. He comes out of nowhere. And there might be many of you who might appear to be a nobody, who would have come from nowhere, would have grown up in a humble beginnings in a little city or a village somewhere. Maybe you are unknown, but you might be unknown to men, but you're not unknown to God. And so Elijah appeared as an unknown, common person, out of nowhere. We know nothing much about him, but the Bible says when he appears on the scene in 1 Kings 17, and verse 1, after he introduces himself, he declares to King Ahab, there shall not be dew nor rain these eggs except at my word. His message was one of judgment. Amazing, remarkable that this nobody who came out of nowhere, hallelujah, an unknown from nowhere, appears before the king and predicted a national calamity. He predicted a national disaster is to come, that there's going to be a drought, there'll be no rain for three and a half years. This was Elijah's god purpose. He heard the call of God. He grasped the purpose of God and by faith he began to carry it out. By faith he began to step out what, what God was calling him to do as a prophet to the nation of Israel. He was a man of purpose. People who make a difference, they understand their purpose and they discover their purpose in God and by reading his word. Secondly, he made a difference and God is calling upon us in our ministry in our service to humanity that we can make a difference. Secondly, to make a difference, he was a man of prayer. He was a man of prayer. In fact, the Bible tells us in chapter 17 and 18 and 19, we see continuously this was a man who was always talking to God. He was always living a life of prayer. He was always calling upon God, even to cause the rain to come back. Amen. He called upon God in prayer to release the rain from the heavens. And so brother James, and in the book of James, the apostle James, the half-brother of the Lord Jesus, in James chapter 5, verses 17 and 18, when he thinks about prayer, James chapter 5, 17, and 18, he is thinking about Elijah. Elijah comes to James' mind in the New Testament when he thinks about a person of prayer. And so the Bible says in, in James 5, 17 to 18, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. Here, James is recording and what are we reading in first? King 17, the account where he makes the pronouncement of a natural disaster and of a drought. And then in chapter 19, he will go before God after three and a half years as God promised. And the rain, the heavens will open and the rains will fall. James remembers brother Elijah in the Old Testament as a man of prayer. And so when James thinks about prayer, he is thinking about Elijah. He was not only a model of powerful prayer, but he was a righteous man. But he was a man of prayer. People of prayer, people who know how to connect with God, spend time with God, talk to God, reach out to God, commune with God. God can work in your life and he can birth purpose in your life and you can make a difference. And so the Bible says he was a man with a nature like ours, meaning he was a man just like us, with the strengths, with weaknesses. He faced trials, he faced temptation. He was no different. He was just ordinary and common, just as we are. His specific petition had such an abundance of power that he was able to stop the rain and start the rain with prayer at the command of God. The Bible says he prayed earnestly. Tell somebody in your home close by, he prayed earnestly. It means he didn't pray only when he was in trouble. He didn't see prayer as a fire extinguisher in an emergency. It means that he prayed habitually. It means that he prayed continually. It means that he prayed consistently. He was consistent and persistent in prayer. He talked to God, as I said, not only when he was in trouble, but he built a life of prayer. And you see, prayer, my friend, is not only about asking and making requests. When the Bible refers to Elijah as a man of prayer, it means that prayer is relationship with God. Prayer is friendship with God. Prayer is dialogue with God. We talk to God and he can talk to us. And so Elijah was known for his prayer and throughout the book of Kings we see him as a man of prayer and James remembers him when he thinks about a powerful prayer he thinks about this man. Not only is, is Elijah a man of prayer who made a difference but even Daniel in whose name the book of Daniel in the Old Testament is written was also used by God. He was a common ordinary uh, Hebrew boy who ended up in captivity in, in Babylon as a youth in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10 the Bible tells us that Daniel was a man of prayer. And God raised up Daniel, amen, to impact the Babylonian empire. Not only that, but Daniel received prophetic insight into the future and into the end of the age and the end of history, and which is penned in his book, the book of Daniel. But in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10, he was also a man who made a difference. Daniel, he was a man of prayer. And in Daniel 6 and verse 10, it says, Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, 
and he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. Then these men assembled and they found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Isn't that wonderful? Elijah made an impact. He made a difference because he was a man of purpose. He was a man of prayer. Daniel was used of God to impact the Babylonian Empire and to challenge the kings of Babylon and to, to give future insight into the world's end and history. The Bible says that he gave thanks before his God as was his custom. It wasn't something that he did only in emergency or when he was in trouble. He was a man of prayer. Prayer was like the oxygen that these men breathe it every day. And in the New International Version says three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. Prayer was a normal pattern. It was a normal cycle in the life of Elijah and Daniel. Even Nehemiah, who God used to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and the gates in Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 4, we read as an introduction to the man Nehemiah. It reads in Nehemiah 1.4, So it was. When I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned many days, I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. The Bible says that when the people appeared, when they reached, amen, they found Daniel praying, amen. And the Bible says Nehemiah, who turned the, 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 the world around in his time by rebuilding the walls and the gates of Jerusalem, he was a man of prayer. The Apostle Paul, writing to the church in Thessalonica, encourages the saints in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Let it be non-stop. Let it be continual. Let it be persistent. Elijah prayed. Daniel prayed. Nehemiah prayed. Even the Lord Jesus, he prayed. It was consistency. It was persistency. It was continual prayer. It was a lifestyle. And so it was this consistent talking to the Lord in prayer, I believe, that set Elijah up to be used by God. And so with having a sense of purpose and being a person of prayer, you are setting yourself up by God to be used by God and to make a difference. Thirdly and finally this morning Elijah made a difference. His life counted. That's like many of us. We want our life to count and we want it to make a difference. God is interested in you. God want to use you. You are wanted for service by Almighty God. He is calling you if your ears can open your ears and you can hear it like Elijah did and Nehemiah and the others in the Bible times and many today in our time are responding to the call of God and they are making a mark for God. I want to let you know that you can make a mark for God. Finally this morning, Elijah, he wasn't only a man of purpose. He wasn't only a man of prayer, but he was a man of passion. He was a man of passion. In 1 Kings 19, verses 9 to 10, it reveals his great passion in life. And the Bible says, And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? In verse 10, so he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. Notice, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. He said, I am very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. He was a man of passion. He was passionate for God. He had a passion for God, for the presence of God. His name means Jehovah is my God. His prayer might have fueled his passion for God. And so he was passionate about upholding God's reputation and God's glory. Hallelujah. And so passion is an important element in this life to live above the level of average. You need to be passionate about life, passionate about God, passionate about something if you want to succeed. Somebody said, passion often separates success and failure. The French military strategist Ferdinand Faure said the most powerful weapon on earth is the human soul on fire. Helen Keller once said life is either as daring as, as a daring adventure or it's nothing. God's glory was the main priority in Elijah's life. God's reputation. He says I am zealous for the Lord God. There are many things that you could be passionate about. People are passionate about food. They are passionate about power. They are passionate about position. They are passionate about money. They are passionate about material things. And those things might have a place if you want to pursue them. But the greatest passion a human being can have if they want to make a difference is a passion for Almighty God. And Elijah had this passion for God. He was concerned about upholding the reputation of God. The name of God. The glory of God was his priority, was his top passion in life, his relationship with God and the presence of God. Romans chapter 12 and verse 11, the apostle Paul writing, he says, not lacking, lagging, sorry, in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Nothing great is ever accomplished in life 
without passion. Nothing great is ever sustained in life without passion. Passion is what energizes life. Passion is what makes the impossible possible. Passion gives you a reason to get up in the morning and go to work and go about your business. I'm asking you, when you get up in the morning, what drives you? What is your inner motivation? What is your inner passion that gives you reason, that gives you a cause to get out of your bed? Or when you get up in the morning and you think about your life and you think about what you're going to do, you just pull the cover and you turn and go back to sleep. But there are folks, amen, who have a purpose. Amen. They have, they have prayer. Amen. And they have a passion, not just for other things. They have a passion for Almighty God. And so it gives them reason to get up in the morning. It puts a pep in their step. It puts a song upon their mouth. And it puts a joy inside of their soul. Without passion, life becomes boring. And this man Elijah, along with Nehemiah and others, they had a passion for God. It is a call to work for God. It is a call to enroll in the service of God. And so you are wanted for service, my friends, as I get ready to close today just like God chose Elijah and called him and put his hand upon him and God's eyes was upon him and had a great purpose for his life I want you to know it was through purpose through prayer and passion that he was able to make a difference for God Almighty you might be ordinary you might be common you might have come out of nowhere as it were apparently but God Almighty his eyes upon you and he created you with a purpose you're not a problem you're a possibility you're not a copy you are an original and there is a call of God and in these last and closing days God is looking for workers and he's calling upon you to give yourself to him and give yourself to the work of God true prayer true passion and true purpose. And so Second Chronicles, I want to leave this verse before we pray. Second Chronicles 16 and verse 9. It says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. I ask you today as I close, when God look in your city, he looks wherever you are, in that vehicle, in your office, in your home, wherever you might be viewing this live stream today, when his eyes fall upon you, and his eyes will, because the scripture says it runs to and fro the earth, to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is loyal towards him. God, back in the 9th century BC, his eyes fell on Elijah. A man of purpose, a man of prayer, and a man of passion. I want to encourage you that you are a person of passion. You're a person of prayer, and you're a person of purpose. And I want to declare for your life that you can make a difference. Don't live for yourself, but live for others. Live for God live for others. I want to pray for you because God is calling upon you. You might hear the call of God. You might feel an encouragement to continue to work for God. I want to encourage you to don't give up. Don't quit on the work of God that God is calling upon you to do. And I want you to believe God to touch you and use you because your life can count. Your life can make a difference and you can be a blessing to others. Let us pray today. Father, we thank you for your word. It's quick. It's powerful. It is truth for you. So we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. And so I thank you for hearing us our, our, our voices. Father, thank you for hearing your words. And I'm believing you, Father, to touch those that are listening, those that are viewing, wherever they are, that there'll be a sense of call. There'll be a sense of purpose. There'll be a desire for prayer. There'll be a sense of passion. I'm believing you, Father, for breakthrough. As your word declared that the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. And we are believing you for a quickening that many will return to the work of God. Many will continue the work of God. We pray that you will strengthen us, Father, to live for you with a sense of purpose and a sense of destiny. We declare that our life is created with purpose, and we pray that you will help us to discover purpose as we draw near to you and as we read your words. We thank you for your word today. We declare our lives will never be the same again. Continue to bless our viewers, bless families, bless wherever they are. Those who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that your salvation will come to them and their lives will be trained supernaturally. We thank you and we declare our lives will never be the same again. Lord, help us to make a difference in these last and closing days where we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And amen. I want to encourage you to give yourself totally to God. Your spirit, your soul, your body, your talent, your health, whatever you have, give it to God. And God can use it as he did with Elijah. And I want you to join us these next few weeks as we draw from different Bible characters on how they were common, how they were ordinary, and God used them to make an impact. This man, Elijah, have no apparent history, but God used him to change history and make an impact on history. And I want you to know you are a candidate for the service of Almighty God. As promised, we want to move on quickly. I want to ask you to join me, get your families together. Oh, by now you would have gotten your grape juice or your, your bread, your, your biscuits, your crackers, whatever you have, as we want to get into a time of communion, following the Lord's instruction. I want to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It will be a great joy to have you join us uh, for this communion time. And I read from 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23. The apostle Paul writes and he says, For I receive from the Lord 
that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Holy Communion is one of the institutions that the Lord Jesus Christ instructed the disciples to commemorate in remembrance of his death, burial, and resurrection, and to also proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. It is a time for communion with the Lord. It is a time for communion with each other, even though in spite of the physical distancing, but in spirit, we can join together with the Lord. We can join together with each other. And so as long as you're overcoming, you live in an overcoming life, you're a born-again child of God, and you'll be following Christ, a disciple of Christ, and you could partake of this holy communion. And so I want to encourage you, if you have uh, the symbol of, of, of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ instructed the disciples after giving thanks, he broke it, he gave thanks, he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I want to encourage you to get your peace lifted before the Lord, and let's ask God's blessing as you partake together of the symbol of Christ's body. Father, we thank you today for what you have done. We thank you for those on the online church, Lord, hearing and receiving. And now we commit this part of the service, the communion service. We ask for your guidance. We ask for your leading, Father. We ask for your wisdom and for your presence to be with us, O God, during this time, to draw us nearer to you and to each other. We pray for your mercy and forgiveness in our life. If there's anything in our life that hinders us from partaking worthily, we pray for cleansing, we pray for washing and the anointing to break every yoke of bondage in our life, that you will help us, Father, to partake worthily. Even now we live the symbol of your broken body. We thank you that with your stripe we are healed. And we thank you, God, today as we remember what you did for us on the cross of Calvary. And we pray today, oh God, as we partake, Father, we partake with understanding, thanking you for your broken body. Your body was broken so we could be healed and we could be restored into right relationship with God and with each other. And so we bless the symbol of, the, of your body and we partake today with understanding in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. With thanksgiving, amen and amen and amen. I want to ask you to... Let's partake together prayerfully and carefully. If you're sick in your body, you need some kind of healing miracle. Jesus' body was broken for our healing. I wanted to trust God you know, for your healing. Even now, Father, before those might be sick, that are viewing, oh God, those that might have illness, sicknesses, diseases, infirmities. Lord, we thank you for your body. We claim your healing power to flow. As I command sick folks to be healed, we rebuke all kinds of sickness, infirmity, disease, and pain, incurable diseases. We even rebuke the COVID-19 virus from our bodies, Lord. And we command your healing power in our life. And I say to you, receive your healing miracle today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. I want you to get your, your cup the symbol of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, your grape juice, your cranberry, the symbol of his blood. The Lord Jesus said in the same manner, he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lift your, your, the symbol of the blood of Jesus Christ. It doesn't turn into his blood. It is symbolic of his life and what he did for us on Calvary. Father, we thank you for sending Jesus. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came and we thank you that we will not redeem with corruptible things as silver and as gold, but the precious blood of Jesus as a lamb without blemish and without spot. And so we pray for fresh cleansing and fresh life as we partake in faith. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for your blood. We remember Calvary. And we pray that you will draw us closer to you and to each other as we partake in faith now with thanksgiving in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. With thanksgiving. Amen and amen and amen. Let's drink together. Well, amen, amen, amen. We thank God for the opportunity to have been in your company today, this beautiful Sunday. We trust that you'll have a great day and a great week. We thank you for viewing. We encourage you to share the link with friends and family. And you can stay connected to St. Martin of Bible Church via our website at www.smobc.org and our website, St. Martin of Bible Church Facebook account. And you can feel free to drop us a line, make a comment. And you can reach out to us. There are numbers, there are names. If you need prayer, you need counseling, anything we can do to help you 
will be so happy. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for what you have done today. We give the glory to you for what we have heard, what we have seen, the Holy Communion. And we declare our lives will never be the same again. We bless your people today in a special way. And we thank you for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen and amen, amen. God bless you. We love you. And we look forward to seeing you another time soon. In Jesus' name.